Hey everybody, how's it going? My name is Jimmy. I'm here with the X-E2 and the X-T1. I want to talk a little bit about film simulation. Not all film simulation is the same on all cameras and phones. In fact, it's been quite the gimmick to sell that kind of stuff. Hey, our cameras and phones can make things black and white and sepia and all that stuff. Well, it's not quite the same with Fuji X. You see, um, I love the quality of the film simulations on these cameras, which is why I purchased them in the first place, among many other reasons. I love the work that they put into their actual film back in the day, and that's exactly what the film simulation on here are based on. So why wouldn't I buy these cameras for that function, or for one of the functions anyway? So don't discount it as some sort of like, oh yeah, my phone can do that. Yeah, not really quite as good in my opinion. Or people might say, why do film simulation on your camera when you can just do it on your computer afterwards? Yes, you can do that. And I have done that myself and I continue to do so. But there's something to be said about learning how to do it on the actual camera body that you invested money into. So go ahead and follow along with me right now. I'm going to teach you a little shortcut here and there, how to get to film simulation, and my thoughts along the way. Okay, grab your camera. Let's go. There are three different ways to do it, and the first way to mess around your film simulation is by going into your menu, the standard way. Put that aside for now. And you'll see that our subject is a very still red ninja. He's very patient with me as he stands still as we take his photo. Okay. First, turn on your camera and go to the menu with your right thumb. Press this button right here. Okay. So if you look down at the bottom of the first menu screen, film simulation is at the bottom. And to the right of that, it says STD. This does not stand for sexually transmitted disease. This stands for um, standard film look, I suppose. Okay. If it did stand for sexually transmitted disease, it'd be a completely different camera and a very strange video. All right. I'm going to try and select it. And you'll see that it skips right over it. I actually can't select it because if you look really closely, it's actually grayed out, meaning it's unavailable to me. Now this leads me to my very next point. I did this on purpose so uh, because this happens all the time. When I'm done with shooting with the camera the night before, I put the camera down and I don't reset the knobs. Because they're all exposed, it doesn't automatically reset, right? So if you look up here, it's set to ADV in the drive knob. and what they're trying to say is film simulation is not available when you're in this mode. So if things aren't working right or things aren't available, check your knobs first. This is why I made that one video a while back saying check your knobs, check your settings because things may seem broken, but it's really our fault for not checking the settings first. Okay? So put this back to S, which stands for single shooting mode. Okay? And for the record, everything is all set to A here. Automatic, automatic zero and in the front here set to s not manual okay not that that matters for this so much but for other functions it's good to practice this very thing i'm talking about just check your settings first now that we've done that go back to menu and now you see film simulation is available to choose Press down, and you can press right here to go ahead and explore it. 11 choices show up or so, uh, standard, Velvia, uh, Astia Soft, Classic Chrome, so on and so forth. Even a couple black and whites are available. And an accompanying uh, description shows up to show you what they can be used for. So let's go ahead and pick uh, Vivid. I use this quite a bit. And you don't necessarily have to use it for nature. I use it pretty much for anything. Press OK. And it selects it. I go back to the menu. You can choose back here or you can half press the shutter button, which is what I do all the time. OK, now I'm in live view. I'm going to focus on my subject here. And take that shot. OK. Let me review that picture by pressing play. Okay, looks good. I'm in the picture mode here. I'm going to press the half shutter button to go back to live view. If I want to change the film simulation, do the same thing. Go back to menu. I ended up at film simulation because that's where I last was at. Press the right arrow here and go down to choose perhaps black and white. Okay. 
Okay, I just press the half shutter button again to get to live view in black and white mode. So I have a black and white uh, film right now. So it's pretty cool. It's all digital and it's all very convenient. I'm gonna press the shutter again and take that shot. This is now a uh, live view. I'm gonna press the play button here. And now I'm reviewing the picture itself. If I press the left arrow here, I can go back to the one where I had the really vivid film simulation. I can compare it to how the look might be if I was in black and white. Completely different message I'm sending to the viewer of my art, right? One is punchy red and one's black and white. Pretty cool. What's another way we can adjust film simulation? And that is by going to the quick menu or the Q menu. You guys should know that the Q is right there. Kind of a small button, but you use this to quickly go and adjust lots of different parameters all at the same time with just a click of this button. Okay, you guys should see here that I am in uh, picture view mode still. Watch what happens when I press Q right now. Nothing. Okay, I have to go into live view, live view, sorry, right there. Now I'm going to press Q. The Q menu shows up. So if that's not working, you have to be in the right mode first. Again, being aware of your settings at the moment, okay? Now, you'll see here, I am in black and white. That's what that B stands for, right? That's what I last said it for. This fine stands for JPEG. I am in processed JPEG form now. Just so you see, I don't wanna to get too confusing here. I can go to raw. And uh, we're not going to do that right now. That's not what this video is about. I am just in fine JPEG processed mode, okay? We'll get into that raw stuff later. For right now, just leave it there, and we're taking black and white pictures, okay? I'm going to press this little um, wheel here with my thumb, and it's just like me going through all the different kinds of uh, film simulation. The only difference is I can't see the examples of what it looks like, like I did last time in the other menu, and I can't see any descriptions. But after doing this for a while, I kind of know what it looks like. Okay. Now, you also notice some of them blank out. For example, color in sepia and color in black and white are not available. That makes sense. Um, so let's just go back to sepia here, and I'm going to half press the shutter button here, and now I'm using a completely different film. Okay, I'm going to press play here to review the picture. This is the play uh, mode here. I'm looking at the picture and I can actually see the differences and how it looks. This one looks punchy red. This one looks old fashioned and classic. This one looks more old timey Western ninja mode. I don't know, but you get the idea, okay? Let's go back to Q mode for a second, which doesn't work at this point. I, again, I'm in picture mode. If I have press the shutter button here, I'm in live view and I can press Q again to go back and change it if I don't want it, okay? Before I do that though, I can fine tune that even further. Okay, you'll see that my uh, shadow tone is plus one. What if I were to change it to possibly uh, negative two and a highlight tone to plus two and half press the shutter button now. So I'm still in that mode, but if I like it, I can fine tune it even further. Okay, and I'm gonna press play here. This is the one where the shadow and the highlights were changed. Do you see the difference between these two film simulations, which are the same, but I've developed the film differently? So I just wanted to share with you guys another quick lesson here that you can 
not only change film simulation, but also fine tune that further, which can lead to slightly different uh, looks that can inspire you even more. So last but not least, what is the third way to adjust film simulation? And that's by using a shortcut. This is just my opinion, but I do think the Q menu and the shortcut are the best ways to access film simulation changes. I'm going to half press the shutter button here. So now I'm back in live view. If I want to change from sepia to something else, I can press my shortcut here. And that is set to this, which is uh, the left arrow. The left arrow, when in live view, does this. It goes right to the film simulation screen. Look at that. Does this look familiar at all? Yeah, it's the same thing that happened when I went to the menu. We're in the same screen right now. The only difference is I got to this one a lot faster. I set this one to that shortcut, the left arrow button, because I use it all the time. You can set it to whatever you want, and I'll show you how to do that right now. I'm gonna half press the shutter button. I went over shortcuts in another video. Feel free to check that out and uh, it'll clearly explain it um, in a better way than I'm about to do it right now. But hopefully you'll get the idea. If you press the back display button and hold it, I'm in uh, live view, just so you know, I'm gonna press this and hold it. It goes to a function setting screen. You'll see that function one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, it's all pointing out to different things on the camera. So there's no confusing on what it's actually referring to. Um, you'll see that uh, function five uh, is a white balance. Function six is the focus area. And function four, which is the left arrow, is the film simulation. Okay, that's the left arrow. If you want to adjust it to be film simulation like I did, press the right arrow when you're highlighting function four just like so, and you can uh, scroll around to all these different functions to be that left arrow. Find film simulation, and don't half press the shutter button here. Press menu OK to set this. It'll blink a little bit, and you should see that set as a film simulation for the left arrow, which is function number four. Half press the shutter button here. Now we're back in live view to test your shortcut for film simulation. Since you use it all the time, you want it to be the left arrow, boom, right there. You can go ahead and pick a very contrasty black and white, which is the green filter. Take that picture. Okay, so what at this point I want to adjust even further. Press the Q menu, as we did before. Notice these are still set that way, the color is unavailable because it's black and white. I can go to shadow tone and possibly bring that up a little bit or bring it up a lot to two, plus two. Okay, let's see what that did. I'm in live view right now, press play. I'm going to compare and contrast between this picture and the last picture. These are both the green filter, black and white, film simulation. Do you see the difference between these two? Same film simulation, slightly different look. One is darker, okay? I'm going to go to live view again. Press Q right here. And you'll notice that I was at plus two. So plus two means more shadows, right? So I'm going to bring this down by using this rotary thing here and bring it down to zero and, and the highlight I will scroll over to this and make this more of a plus one, let's say. Okay, I'm just fine tuning. Now I press the half shutter button, go to live view. I'm gonna go ahead and take this picture. Okay, press play. And now I can compare between this one, this one, and this one. All the same film simulation, okay? Now, these were the three different ways of doing it. The first one was the menu. The second way was through the quick menu. The third way was through the shortcut. Just one last thing before I let you go. I'm going to go to live view here. 
by pressing the shutter button, half pressing it, and I'm going to go to Q, or I can press the left arrow button here. I'm going to go here. I can see exactly what I'm looking at as I scroll through. Very convenient. Uh, let's see, the soft one. Press menu OK. Okay, and again, it's a very subtle change, but the changes are there. If I press Q at this point, I can now adjust the color. I can make the color even punchier or more, a little bit more desaturated. And then by pressing the play button, I can compare between the two different color saturations that I've set. Okay? Now for the XE2, and I'm going to go to menu here. And you see that film simulation isn't the last one, but third to last in the very first menu. Okay, I press menu OK with the right arrow. And it comes to a very similar screen, if not the same exact screen, because they share the same firmware. And there you go. I hope uh, you guys learned a little bit about uh, how to use film simulation and why it's necessary to uh, use it to get inspired and how to fine tune it even further in your quick menu. This is something I use all the time without even using my computer. Again, these are all in JPEG format. We have not touched RAW as of right now, but you don't need to. Process it in your, in your camera. This is what you bought it for, in my opinion. Okay, talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.